How's it going? My name is Lyra Parati. I'm with Mountain Madness, one of the guys. And I'm here today to talk about how the gear check will go when you arrive for a trip. So this is roughly what your kit will look like when you arrive for a three-day mountaineering trip, such as a, a baker climb. Not exhaustive and many variations. We don't include any food here. Keep that in consideration. The, that will add some weight and bulk. So a few tricks I'll point out here as we go along. My water system. Right here, you'll notice for the summertime, I like these lightweight platypus bags. When they're empty, they compress down to nothing, so that's awesome. Instead of a cup, I roll with a little Nalgene, I like to call it the little Nalgene, which can hold hot water as well as, as cold water for the climb. I will add a thermos sometimes, maybe a double up on, on these water bags if I need more water for a climb. And then my sleep system is a great opportunity to shave a lot of weight. You'll notice here I've got this itsy bitsy, women's specific Neo Air. It just means it's a little bit smaller than the, the, the regular, the men's Neo Air. And my sleeping bag here, nice, nicely compressed. That makes a big difference. I can shave a lot of weight there. So that's a good, a good place to put your money if you're considering buying new gear. As we go across here, you'll see an average kit of technical gear, a couple carabiners and a personal Prusik. Our crampons nicely tied up and secure with the points inside. Ice axe and some example group gear. When you arrive, you'll have to take some group gear. So you might take half of this, the stove equipment. We'll do pull and fly. And then you might need to take a picket as well. So those are all examples of group, group gear. I've got a 38 liter pack. I need to fit all of that stuff plus my layers into it and make sure that it's comfortable and balanced for the approach into base camp and potentially some scrambling you might do to get there. So how are we gonna make that happen? All right, let's take a look. So I roll with a pretty small bag. Do a test run before you come. Make sure that all your kit will fit inside of it. And remember, you've got group gear as well as food. I'm gonna head, head over here, pick up my sleeping bag, starting with items that I probably won't need on the approach. Sleeping bag, hopefully I don't need that on the approach. If I do, something, something went terribly wrong. So I'm gonna cram that stuff down in the bottom there. Fuel bottle. I will try to keep that upright. Technically it shouldn't leak. Check it, make sure it's not leaking. I'm gonna put that on the side and close to my back. Heavy items I try to keep in close to my back here. Any funky air spaces I'm gonna fill up with, with soft goods like my jackets that I'm not gonna wear today or, or pants. What I would wanna do is put something on top of my sleeping bag and things I don't wanna puncture because I really like to get those crampons inside my bag if I can. Some backpacks might be able to carry crampons here. I've added this, this shock cord here in order to cr carry crampons there, so that's an option. But sometimes I'll try to get it inside, so we'll show that option first. Points are together. These are black diamond crampons, not quite as sharp as Petzl, so there's, a, there's one benefit to that, I guess, is ease of packing. I'm gonna slide those right in there, and as I put everything in my backpack, I'm pressing it down. Let's see, I'm not gonna need, I'm not gonna need my cookware. I can place that in here as well. And th at this point, I would put food in here that I'm not gonna eat today, carry, carry a few items in the top of my backpack. Let's show one way, getting the rope inside. If you can get the rope inside, that's gonna carry a little bit more comfortably. And at this point, you want your backpack to look like it's full of water when you're done packing it. That means no little air spaces and nicely compact down there. Let's throw the tent in there. There's no need to, to carry a folded tent. Take one corner of it, and this is where you're gonna start making this bag look like it's full of water. Really, really work that into every corner. I always like to say, if, uh, if you're not sweating, you're not packing. Poles, go down one side. Again, keeping it close to your back panel so that the heavier items, these denser, heavier items, are easier to carry. And the fabric should be tough enough that you can slide that right down there. So you can see, get that all the way down. There we go. And keep on stuffing, keep on stuffing. This pack is a 38 liter, but it is a very large 38 liter pack. It's kind of surprising. This big puffy jacket, I don't think I'll need that today. At least not before we get to camp. Definitely not gonna change into long underwear while I'm hiking up there. That would be, that'd be awkward. And then rain pants, shell pants, those are pretty good to have close to the top of your bag in case weather comes in. Socks. Let's get those far down there. And really, as you can see, I'm pushing way down into this pack here, getting things as far down as I can. Gloves, good to have handy for sure. Water and snacks. All right, now I'm gonna seal this up. So there's my first, first step there. Now this pack gives me one option. 
for the helmet, and I can actually carry it over the top here. I'll show you that system, it's a good one. Otherwise, I can tuck it right in here. Really good to be protective of your helmet, especially if you have one of these foam ones. So you may want to put it in here. That's gonna add some hassle every time you open your bag if you need to get a snack and water. But you want to keep that helmet protected. Plastic helmets are a little more rugged. Sometimes you might put them on the outside of your backpack. It's not my favorite way to roll with it. So I'll show you another option. And notice how balanced things are looking already, right? So that's looking pretty tight. Nice and smooth on the sides. And that'll carry that much better. All right, let's see. What am I gonna carry up in this brain? You know I've got nothing in here. The moment you start loading up this brain with items, it's gonna get really heavy and it's gonna make your backpack top heavy. That's definitely something you don't want. Minimal sunscreen, you don't need a lot there, right? Just chapstick, and I like the sunscreen sticks. Headlamp, sunglasses, glacier glasses. Here's a buff, and I, I like a headband instead of a hat because I usually wear a lot of hoods. Just depends where you're going. Make sure it's a system that works for you either way. Okay, and those are quick access items, relatively lightweight. If the weather changes, sun comes out, or it gets cold, I can adapt quickly. Now, this pack's pretty cool. It has this top carry helmet. First time I ever saw it, I thought it was kind of silly. And I quickly realized that it carries magnificently well, especially if you have a super, super lightweight helmet like I do. Keeps everything streamlined, and it keeps the weight centered over you, rather than putting it on the outside here. Okay, next step, ice axe goes here. This gets secured on, this is this one system. You'll see this frequently in backpack systems. And then here, that attaches there, cinch it down. Now let's put that picket onto the side. Sharp items are good to, other than crampons, are good to have outside the pack. So I'm gonna slide this through here. I do like to make sure that this stays attached somehow. So let's see, I'm gonna weave this through. That's pretty well tied on there. That just adds some security, so if it comes, comes loose, it won't explode off my pack. Many strap options here. I'm gonna make that flush with my backpack so I don't catch on trees. And there we have it. Nicely packed pack. 